Hi there. In this video, we're going to talk about poles, essential singularities, and removable singularities. So previously, we spoke about analytic functions, and we said the characteristic of analytic or regular functions is that they are defined, single-valued, and that the derivative exists. However, there are points in which these criteria are not met. And if we were to consider a simple illustration of this, we could consider the function f of z is equal to 1 over z minus 1. So if we analyze this, we see that it is not analytic. So it is not analytic at z is equal to 1. If we substitute 1 inside this function, we see that 1 minus 1 is 0. We have 1 over 0, which is obviously not defined. So we say that at z is equal to 1, there is what's called a singularity or a singular point. So the question in this video is, how do we interpret the singularity? Is there different kinds of singularities? And how do we go about just understanding this whole thing? So the way this whole thing is sort of characterized is by looking at how does the function go to infinity? If we said that we have 1 over 0, it means that this function goes to infinity. In other words, it becomes very large. So how does it approach infinity? Does it approach infinity in a controlled way or does it approach infinity in an uncontrolled way? And the way that happens actually affects this criteria or this characterization of uh, singularities. So the first type is a pole. So when we speak about a pole, what we're actually saying is that this function approaches infinity in a controlled manner. So when I say controlled manner, I will just give an illustration of what I mean. So we have poles. So the easiest way to illustrate this would be through an example. So we have a function, and that's f of z is equal to 2z over z plus 4 squared. So the question is now, what are the poles? So firstly, we see that there is a singular point at minus 2. So at z is equal to minus 2, we have our singularity. So the way we check if this singular value approaches infinity in a controlled way is by considering a, a certain limit. So maybe I should just mention here that the key characteristic about poles is that infinity is approached in a controlled way. Controlled way. So what we do is, firstly, we take this function f of z. So that's 2z into z plus 4 squared. Okay. What we do is we multiply it, we multiply it by this denominator, that's z plus 4 squared. Okay, so this is the technique. And then what we do is for this expression that we have just written, we take the limit as z approaches this singular value, which is uh, minus 4, sorry. Shouldn't have been minus 2, it's minus 4. So we can see clearly here that what we are doing is we are kind of cancelling out this uh, singular value, right? So this part of the expression that makes it into a singularity, we are sort of removing, removing it out. So we are sort of cancelling out singularity. So the reason why we do this is because this limit gives us a way to see how this function actually approaches infinity. We can see that we cancel out this, this term, and what we left with is the limit as z approaches minus 4 of 2z. And we can see that this is minus 8. So when we get a value that is not equal to 0, okay, when we get a value that's not equal to zero, it means that it's actually a pole. We can call it the term a pole. So a pole is a singular value 
in which approaches infinity in a controlled manner, right? So this limit gives us this non-zero value. And because it's non-zero, it tells us that as we approach uh, the singular point, this function goes towards infinity in a controlled manner. This is the thing about poles. So to find a pole, all we do is we compute this limit and we can write this limit in a general way. So that limit written generally is that it's the limit as z approaches some kind of singular value, that's z naught in this example here is minus four. And we write this limit generally as z minus z naught multiplied by the function of z. And also we have to raise it to the power n. So this to the power n tells us the strength of how it approaches infinity, uh, the function that is. So this is what a pole is. So just to summarize once more, we have a function, we have its singularity, and it's a pole if this function, this limit that we've uh, just computed now, is not equal to zero. On the other hand, we can have a function, for example, f of z is equal to e to the power one over z. Now we can clearly see here that we have a singularity where z is equal to zero, okay? So in this case here, we can't sort of directly and clearly cancel out this uh, pole from this, or sorry, not this pole, but the singularity from this expression. But what we can actually do is just take the limit as z approaches zero of this function itself, which is e to the power one over z. So what do we see happening here? So let's just take two values. Let's just say for instance that, you know, uh, z is equal to 0 0.1, right? So what this means is that we're going to have e to the power 1 over 0 0.1, which is e to the power 10. Now, e to the power 10 is a huge value, okay? It's a very big number. On the other hand, if we take z is equal to minus 0 0.1, then what's actually happening is that we're going to have e to the power minus 1 over 1 over 0 0.1. Okay, so this is supposed to be 1 over 0 0.1. Then what this means is that we have e to the power minus 10, and this is very small. So as we approach 0, okay, this function fluctuates between extremes. So what we're saying is that it doesn't approach infinity in a very controlled manner, right? So whereas with a pole, we computed this limit and we can see that, okay, there's a very clear, distinct way in which this function is going to approach infinity in a very linear manner. On the other hand, we have this function here, and we see that, okay, we have wild fluctuations in the values as it approaches zero. So this function is going to fluctuate wildly as uh, we approach the singularity. So in this case here, what it's called is an essential singularity. So an essential singularity is just a point in which the function approaches infinity in a very uncontrolled way as z approaches this singularity. The last type of singularity that we're going to talk about is that of a removable singularity. So it is a removable singularity. An, an illustration of this would be the function f z is equal to sine z over z, okay? If we first just look at this, we can see that we have a singularity at, again, z is equal to zero. However, we can't actually classify this as a pole or a essential uh, singularity. And the reason for this is because this function where z is equal to zero actually exist. There is actually some kind of convergence. In, convergence. In, fact, in fact, the function converges to one. So in other words, if we take the limit as z approaches zero of this function, that's sine z over z, then this actually converges to one. We can see this by expanding the Maclaurin series. 
So if we were to expand the Maclaurin series of sine z over z, okay, and we take the limit of that, so the Maclaurin series of sine z over z is 1 minus z squared over 3 factorial plus z to the power 4 divided by 5 factorial and it so on and so on. I've shown in previous videos how to actually determine this type of series. But anyway, if we exclude the terms where z is going to go to 0, which is every other term besides the first term, then we see that this is equal to 1. So what that tells us is that it's not actually a singularity like how it is with a pole or a uh, essential singularity where the function is not actually defined, it goes to infinity. In this case here, it's more that the function has a kind of missing value, so to speak. So to put it very loosely. So we just put in that missing value just by considering uh, the limit as it approaches that uh, singularity. So in this video, we have just discussed three types of singularities. The first one is the pole. We just see that the pole is simply a singularity where the function approaches infinity when z approaches the singular point in a controlled manner. Okay? An essential singularity is essentially where the function fluctuates wildly as z approaches the singularity. And then lastly, we have a removable singularity where the function just has a, a sort of missing value uh, at the singularity. So these are the three most common kinds of sim uh, singularities that are analyzed in complex analysis. So thank you very much for watching.